Okay, so in this problem, we're told two masses, MA equals two kilograms, and MB equals five kilograms, are on inclines and are connected together by a string as shown in this figure. Uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction between each mass and its incline is 0.3. If MA moves up and MB moves down, determine their acceleration. So let's get an understanding of what's going on here. So we have this mass here. It's going to move up this way. They tell us MA goes up and MB is going to go down. And so essentially what we're trying to find is their acceleration. So uh, always want to write down your given. So I just wrote the mass of MA, mass of MB. Uh, we know the coefficient of kinetic friction. They give, the, they give us that in this problem. And then A equals question mark because uh, that's what we're trying to find. And so in order to solve this problem, the first thing I recommend doing whenever you're solving a problem like this is to draw the free body diagram. So we're basically we're going to split these into two. So I'm going to write the same, uh, same variable for both, but just imagine they're split in two. So the first thing that we know acting on both of these is uh, the for normal force. So we know the normal force is going to be acting on each of these, and we know it's going to be perpendicular to this uh, plane that it's on. So this one is going to point up this way. And then we also have the normal force from the other plane acting this way. So F sub n and F sub n, just keep in mind, they're basically two different things. Um, and then we also know that they're going to be moving with uh, friction. So we know there's going to be a force of friction when it moves. So we can label the force of friction. And so keep in mind, the force of friction always travels uh, or always acts opposite to the way it travels. So we know this box is going upwards. This one's going down. So it's going to travel this way. So force of friction is opposite to that. And so keep in mind, it's going to be parallel to this plane because it's always parallel to what's traveling on. So I'll just call it F sub S for uh, force of friction. This one's going to travel down this way. So opposite to the way it goes and then parallel again. And so that's going to be the force of friction and the normal force. And now what we want to label is the force of gravity. So keep in mind that gravity always acts straight down. So it's always going to act this way. But when we label these, we always want to label them in their x and y components, or at least I think it's, it's much easier to solve these when you do it. So keep in mind when I say x and y, the x and y axis for each of these are relative to their inclines. So the x axis on this one is going to be parallel to its incline, and then the y axis would be perpendicular to that line. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. And same thing for this one, this would be the x axis because it's parallel to this incline and then perpendicular again. So even though gravity does go down, right, if we label like this and we call it f sub g the force due to gravity, straight down on each of these boxes and so you mind it is from the center of the box i'm just drawing it down here though just to make it easier to see uh, if we want to label their x and y components the way we drew it we know that this is the y so this would be the force f sub g of y and then this one is parallel to the x uh, x axis we drew so this would be fg of x so it just makes it easier to solve because when you solve these you want to get their components in the x and y so just keep that in mind so so we have f of g of y here and then parallel to the incline fgx. And so there's one more force we need to label here is the force of tension. So we know we have a string pulling on each of these. So you can just call this f of t, which is just the force due to tension. And so keep in mind, the reason that's pointing that way is because we know it's pulling it. So f of t is going to be acting that way. And then for this one, we know it's going to be pulling against it because it's going this way. So the force of tension is like this. Since this one's pulling it this way and this one's pulling it acting against it. So this is basically going to be your free body diagram. And so that's how we're going to do the free body diagram. And so how do we actually solve this problem? So the way you do it, or the way I would start, is by summing the forces in the x direction on one of them, because we're going to have to get them into different equations, and then we're going to plug it into one big equation. So let's just start with that. So we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. So some of the forces in the x. And so we know uh, F equals MA. So the sum of the forces in the X will equal MA. And so what we're going to do is start with block A. So keep in mind, as I said before, this axis right here is our X. So this is our X axis. So when I'm summing the forces, I'm summing along this way. So uh, keep that in mind. And so another thing you have to realize is that I'm going to make this direction positive. So if I go to the right, it's positive and this way is negative because when you sum them, you have to include that. So we know M and so keep in mind, we're dealing with MA. So I would write MA times A equals, and so we have the force of tension acting to the right. So we have the force of tension plus, or sorry, uh, minus the force of friction, because that's going the opposite way. And then once again, what other force do we have acting in the X? We have the force due to gravity in the X. And so keep in mind, it's going downwards too, or to the left, I guess you would say. So we would also minus this. So minus F 
g of x. Okay, so we've got that. And so I'm going to expand this out a little bit. So ma times a equals the force of tension. We can't really simplify that. But what we can do is simplify the other two. So minus the force of friction. So the force of friction is a formula you have to know, which is that it's equal to uh, mu sub k times f sub n. So let me move this over here. Mu sub k times f sub n. So I'm just going to abbreviate it as mu. So just this, I'm not going to write the k every time because we don't need to. Uh, but basically mu times f sub n. And then minus, and then the force of gravity is we know is going to be equal to mg, right? Because that's what f of g is. It's just mass times gravity. That's what the force due to gravity is. So ma times g. But keep in mind, we're dealing with the x component here. And so I'm just going to give you the shortcut. I'm not going to show you how to do it. But essentially, you're just using trig. So this angle right here is the same as this angle. I guess I will show it. So this is 51 degrees. So this is also 51. So we want to find the x component here. We know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is the opposite. This is hypotenuse. So all you have to do is all you have to do is just do mg, right? So if you're finding fg of x, I'll write it out here. It's equal to mg times the sine of whatever angle the incline is. So that's a trick you should know. So whenever you're finding uh, the force of gravity in the x direction, when you're doing a problem like this, just do mg times the sine of the angle on the incline. In this case, it's this. If you were doing the y component, you would just do cosine instead because cosine is adjacent the side over the hypotenuse, which is f of g. So that's just a little trick. So if we actually want to simplify this, it's ma, right? Because we're dealing with the box uh, a. So times this is mg sine of 51 degrees. OK, cool. So we have ma, a, yeah. OK, good. So that's that. Now we're going to do the second step. And so we're going to do, since we did the x, now we're going to do the y. So some of the forces in the y is equal to, and so keep in mind that we're not moving in the y direction, if you notice this. We're only moving along this x-axis. The y, we don't actually increase at all. We stay the same on the y because we're just moving along the x. So it actually equals 0. Because if we're not moving in that direction, right, we're not moving in it, there can't be any acceleration. So some of the forces in the y equals 0. So just keep that in mind. If you don't move along an axis, it's some of the forces equals 0. And so what are the forces acting this direction, though? So we have, if we look, the normal force right here. And we have the force due to gravity in the y. That's the only one, or the component of f of g. So these act in the x, so they don't actually uh, change our y. So keep in mind, as I said before, this is the y. So we have f sub n and f g of y. So yeah, so we have 0 equals the sum of the forces in the y. So f sub n. Since it's going upwards, we're going to label it positive. That's just the way I like to do it. So f sub n is positive. It goes upwards. And then fg of y is negative because it goes downwards. So minus fgy. Now, what is fg of y? So we want to simplify that. So 0 equals f sub n. We don't know that yet. Minus. And so keep in mind how I said ma, since we're dealing with block a, ma g times the sine of 51 for the uh, x component, the y component is just cosine. So we have cosine of 51. And so this basically tells us right here that f sub n, if we just move this to the other side, f sub n is equal to ma g cosine of 51. And so this should be pretty intuitive because these are the only forces in the y acting. So we have f sub n and f g of y. And so obviously if it doesn't move in that direction, it equals 0. So they have to be equal or else we would move in the y. So uh, we have that. And so that's good. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and plug it back in. So essentially what we're doing now is we're solving for f of t. So you see f of t right here. And we can't find it with f sub n, so we have to plug it back in now. So that's what we're going to do now. So we have ma times a equals f sub t minus mu times f sub n right here. So ma g cosine of 51, and then minus ma M -A g sine of 51. 
So yeah, if you want to get this by itself, we're just going to add this to the other side. So the force of tension in this case is equal to... So we're just moving these to the each side to get tension by itself because we're going to need it in order to solve for this one. So uh, F sub T equals... Let's go ahead and write that. So I'm just moving this. So M A G sine of 51 plus mu M A G cosine of 51 and then plus M A A. So yeah, that's what we got now. So now we have the force of tension. And so we're gonna do the same thing we basically did for block A, now that we have F sub T, but we're gonna do it for the other block. So M, uh, this block MB, right? So one with MB. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, once again, we're gonna sum the forces in the X. So let me actually do it over here, so just so I can have that visible. So we have the sum of the forces in the X equal. And so what is gonna be equal? It's gonna be equal to, since we're dealing with block B, F equals MA, so MB times A. So if we sum the forces in the X, so keep in mind this is our new X axis. We're treating this as a whole new thing. So since it's a whole new thing, uh, in the X we have the force of tension, the force of friction, and we have uh, right, the force due to gravity in the X. So we go ahead and write that. So we're gonna assume, we're gonna assume that the right is positive. So this way is positive, this way is negative. So that means both of these F of T is negative. Let me just write that here. And then minus uh, the force of friction, that's also negative. And then minus, or sorry, it's plus, since the force of gravity in the X is to the right. So the only ones you have acting is this one, and then these two up here. So the force of tension and the force of friction here. So let's just add that in, plus F G of X. So now we've got all of those. So what we want to do is go ahead and simplify this. MBA equals minus F of T. And so keep in mind what FGX is. So FGX, once again, is the force of gravity. So if we're finding it in this case, just like on the last one. So this is going to be plus M, sorry, this is MB times G. And then X component is sine. So once again, when we did it here, it was sine. It's always sine if you're doing it like this. So sine of the angle. Hopefully that made sense when I explained it too, right? Because this angle is the same as this one. Sine is opposite over uh, the hypotenuse. So it would give us the FG of X. And I can show that at the end. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we have MBG sine of 21. And then that's, in mind that this is FG of X. And then we want to minus the force of friction, which is just mu times F sub n. So yeah, that's going to be that. Um, and so now what we want to solve for is F sub n, and we're going to do that by summing the forces in the y, just like we did on the other one. So essentially, we're just repeating the same stuff. Some of the forces in the y are going to be equal to zero, just like the last one, zero equals, because it's not moving in, in the y direction. Uh, but in the y, we have it like this. So we have F sub n, you can see, and then Fg of y. So it's going to be equal to, and so we're going to say f sub n is going up, it's positive, so minus f g of y. So f sub n equals f g of y. So f sub n, and then f g of y is just m b times g, and since we're dealing with a y, instead of it being sine of, and sorry, I wrote 51 here. Did I write 51? Yeah, so it's actually not 51. It's 21. That was my mistake. Since we're dealing with this one, it's... 21, not 51. This was with this one. I just wrote it out of habit. So let me go ahead and erase that. So this is actually 21. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, so it's 21 and then MBG and then it's cosine for the Y. So cosine of 21 instead. Since we're dealing with the Y, cosine is the adjacent. Sorry, this is the adjacent. Yeah, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's that. And then, so we got that. So we, now we know the normal force. And we can go ahead and plug it back in. And so now what we're going to do is, you see we have MA, we have MBA, and we're going to plug this in for F sub n. 
and then we're going to plug in f of t for what we found down here and that's going to allow us to solve for a we're going to have every other variable and so yeah let me go ahead and do that now so uh i'm not going to show you how to solve the equation after i plug it in i'll just give you the value what it is and you, you can solve it on your own if you'd like but uh yeah so we have mb times a equals minus f sub t so i'm at yeah so minus f sub t let me actually do it down here i'm gonna make it kind of small sorry about that so mba equals minus f sub t so minus m a g sine of 51 plus mu m a g cosine of 51 plus m a a and so keep in mind the reason we're able to do that is because these tension forces are the same so that's just how you should know about uh, something like this. Their tension forces are the same. That's why we're able to do that. So then we have plus mg sine of 21 minus mu times f sub n here. Hopefully I wrote this right. If I messed up, just keep in mind that's all. We're, we're just plugging these into that equation there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, now all you got to do is basically solve for a. So you basically just take the a's out and then simplify. You have the mass of each of the blocks. So keep in mind when I wrote m here, it was m, mb. This is mb. I should have wrote mb there because we're dealing with 21, so obviously it's block b. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is going to be your equation. If you want to solve for a, you can go ahead. I'm going to give you the value. You're going to get that it is equal to uh, 2.15 meters per second squared. So this is going to be the acceleration of each of the blocks. And so keep in mind they have the same acceleration because they're basically one system. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully you understood how we did it here. We basically needed it. We knew we needed to solve for tension on one of the blocks to solve for it. So that's the first thing you should have noticed. We need tension if we wanted to solve. So in order to find tension, we had to deal with the, one of the blocks by itself. In this case, we chose A. You could do B. Um, but yeah, so we had to solve for the forces in the X. And then we were able to get F sub N to solve for F of T. And then we just plugged it back into the other one. But yeah, so kind of a long problem. But uh, yeah, so... You just got to plug them in here if you want to solve for it. But 2.15 meters per second squared, that's going to be your acceleration. Sorry about the error I made here. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be your answer. And hopefully you found this useful.